Tosta is a town of historical significance, particularly during the Roman times. Known as Lactodorum, it was a garrison town on the Watling Street, a street that's played a major role in its history ever since. During an excavation as part of a regeneration project for Moat Lane, an intriguing discovery was found, increasing our understanding of Toaster during this time. When digging beneath the surface of Moat Lane, the remains of a small building was unearthed, leading to several further digs across the site and some very interesting Roman findings, not least the discovery of a surprisingly well-preserved Roman cellar wall. Simon Carlyle of Cotswold Archaeology explains. Well, we started back in 2012, which comprised a number of trial trenches around the Moat Lane regeneration area. And in a number of the trenches, we found some good Roman remains. So based on that, we carried out further excavations this year in uh, 2013. The walls turned up during the evaluation. We dug a small test pit, only two metres square, and just purely by luck, we came down top of the wall. It's very well preserved. Uh, it was underneath the car park. So we, we enlarged the area in 2013, uh, see what the wall belonged to. And it's basically part of a cellar. It's very well constructed. It's got uh, sort of a, an outer wall, then there's a layer of clay, and then an inner wall. And initially we thought it could have been to keep water in, but then we, as we excavated down, we found complete Roman vessels stacked around the edge of the room. When we excavated the, the, the cellar, it had been backfilled uh, with all sorts of rubble and material. But at the bottom, there was a sort of, a sort of silty material, and in that, we had a number of um, complete Roman vessels stacked around the edge of the wall. So that will give us an accurate date to when it, was, when it was in use. And we found, prior to the building of the, of the, of the cellar, there were other features that it, that it cut. There's, there's some strange slots. There's two on one side and one on the other. And when we first started excavating, we thought maybe they were to hold timber beams to sort of partition the cellar up. But it soon became clear that they weren't actually aligned. They're actually all offset. So it's a bit of a mystery to what, what, what they were for. The pottery found um, in the cellar, there's a number of complete vessels, which is quite a nice find you know, from the Roman period. And they, they date on the whole to sort of the sort of second, third century. Uh, they, they would have been sort of locally produced. And we've had some saming as well. It's a nice figure same with the sort of uh, pictures on the side. So yeah, I mean, the, the bulk of the material we're finding, we found, is sort of, yeah, sort of second, third century in, into the fourth. Quality of the build suggests that it's possibly sort of local government building rather than sort of private development. But then later on, it seems the building was changed use and an annex was built on the back, which may have been for some sort of possibly industrial purpose. We found evidence for, for burning, like a sort of stoke hole, it may have had some other function. It probably dates to around sort of mid-second century. It's a good, good quality building. There were suggestions that we should sort of move the building, put it somewhere else for display. But in a sense, that, that would totally destroy its archaeological integrity. You may as well just build a new one out of new stone. So to preserve it in situ seemed like the best option, because it would pres preserve it for the future beneath the modern building. The modern building would have no impact on, on, on the Roman remains. It's been fully recorded, it's been photographed, drawn, there's, there's records from every sort of single context within, within the building. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to backfill it. We're backfilling it with, uh, with sand to protect the stonework. And we're doing it now before the frost starts, because once, once the frost gets in, it will start to make the stone deteriorate. From an archaeological point of view, it's, it's, it's actually a very exciting discovery. I mean, Roman buildings aren't particularly common, especially not building that, that sort of uh, quality. And I think it's particularly with toaster, I think so little's known about the interior of Roman toaster, that to actually find part of, part of a street and a building in, in such good state of preservation, it's, it's, it's been excellent. It gives a real, real good insight to, to the layout of this part of the Roman town.